Welcome back to the Fantasy Rugby Draft Podcast. Thanks for downloading and listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson, and joining me again in the booth is the man primarily made of moss, Nathan Mossman. Thanks for pulling in, mate. Yep. Cheers, Bruce. It's holiday season, and I'm pretty sure that'll be reflected in the amount of effort that goes into this podcast. <laughs> Good to hear, mate. Good to hear. We also have a very special guest joining us today from uh, Green and Gold Rugby, Reg Roberts. How's it going, mate? Very good, guys. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to be here. No problem. Appreciate oh, it's it. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to have some real talent on here for a change. That's true. <laughs> Someone who knows what they're talking about. Uh, a bit of admin. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Rug Draft. Uh, that's Fantasy R-U-G Draft. Or on Facebook. Or if you have any questions, send us a mail on support at fantasyrugbydraft.com. You can also follow Reg and his words of wisdom on, uh, is it at Rugby Reg? Is that right? That's the one, mate. Good man. You can follow him and his wise words there. Uh, the reason we've brought in Reg today uh, is that we're going to discuss the Australian squads. They were announced in October. Uh, we'll look at the comings and goings, and we'll try and second-guess the coaches' starting lineup, which is always a uh, fruitless task in December when there isn't a hell of a lot of coverage in the paper, but we'll have a shot at it. Before we jump into it, though, I want to apologise for the, the sound quality in the last pod. That'll be the last uh, pod we record in a grain silo. <laughs> but we, okay. uh, yeah, we, we, we can't... Uh guarantee that there's not going to be problems of other kinds, but we, we've dealt with Well, that's that true. That's the first one on the list we've, we've set aside, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there'll be many more. Uh, okay, getting into it, Reg, uh, what do you think of the Waratahs? Can they repeat, mate? Mate, I think they can. I mean, they're a very good team. The biggest question mark I have about the Waratahs this year is how Coach Chica handles mm. the dual roles, uh, to be quite frank. Personally, I'm against the fact he's got both roles, and that's not just because I'm a Queenslander. I, I just think it's, you know, neither is a part-time role. I, I, and w- when it gets down to it, I think the Waratah role will, 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 will get them through. I mean, I don't think the Wallabies will be the one that struggle. You know, he'll be f- spending all his time on the Waratahs, um, and, and they'll reap the benefits, and it's the Wallabies will struggle come World Cup time. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But a- a- as far as... Players have got a really stable squad. Um, probably two key losses being Kane Douglas, uh, their big lock forward who's, who's gone over to the UK, and uh, their winger who's only had the one year last year, Lofa Lofa, who's gone off to play in France. So only the two real losses for them this year. So a nice stable squad. A Lofa a Lofa was very good for fantasy rugby draft in the first the first three three or four game weeks. He uh, he put his name across a lot of uh, free agent lists. He was uh, he got a lot of points early on, and then yep, he... so good they named him twice. That's yeah, right, exactly right. <laughs> That's right. He faded away a little bit, I'd have to say, but he certainly was one that uh, was drafted outside of. Uh, I'm not even sure he, he was drafted in many leagues, uh, but he certainly came up back, came up trumps. So yeah, he uh, came from nowhere for sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So over under a number of games, uh, Michael Checker. Uh, we'll be watching from his couch. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I mean, I reckon the pressure, there's, there's two key phases of pressure for Cheeks, and it's it's that band of local derbies. I think it comes sort of round 11 where he plays a few of those Aussie preferences in a row, and that's about when, you know, he's realised that whereas a normal Wallaby coach has the full support of the, uh, of the states behind him, that's when he knows that none of these bastards are giving him anything. <laughs> No one's telling him about injured players. No one's yep. telling him about who's training well, who doesn't train well. He's getting nothing. Yes. So that's a good chance. And the next one is when he heads over to South Africa. I think the Tars have a, a South Africa trip towards the end of the year, mate. And you know how that South African press will be just rubbing their hands with glee waiting for Cheeks to come back over. Yeah, they're a welcoming bunch. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. They'll, 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 ra- they'll lay the red carpet out for them. Yeah. So I think there's always going to be you know an element of bias to a certain, you know, um, the, or the Aki's or, you know, it might be seen to be slightly biased if, you know, if a number of Waratahs make the Aussie squad, you know, to the, you know, instead of maybe guys from from other other teams. So, you know, could be a bit of politics there. Link, yep. Link had a little bit of that problem at the Reds when Quade Cooper was playing so well and he, he had to have him at 10, but then there was this considered, well, you know, you're only playing him because he's your fly half, where in actual fact he was the best player in Australia. So Yeah, well, what interesting. Link actually picked uh, Matty Tamura at fly after his first two tests with Quaid off the bench mm. against the All Blacks, might I say, so he kind of <laughs> threw him in there. Um, and then Quaid was back after that and, and proved his quality. So, yeah, you're right. It's that perception of bias that Cheeks has to balance. So looking at a um, looking at the fantasy stars that come out of the Waratahs, I, I see there's a couple of 
couple of interesting ones here. Now, we, we, I tried to pronounce his name on the last podcast, Reed, so you probably Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to this. Here. I'm looking forward for this. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to go with Naya Yavoru. Yeah, great. Uh, close? You've done well, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, well him... I just think it could be quite good. He uh, he came on at the end of last season. He just managed to get his minutes up to be able to play in the finals. Um, but he looked like someone that if they give him a little bit of time and a system and he got the starting job, he actually was, he, he's going to be a, a barnstormer. What are your thoughts there? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the number of variations of pronunciations that you can <laughs> oh, over under on six. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he's he's uh, an interesting one. I'd be interested to hear from a fantasy perspective, ha- fantasy perspective, how he went because he came from Noah, who was a mid-year signing from the West Tigers rugby league team. He's had a bit of rugby in him. He's played some club rugby. He played the NRC um, and, and did some damage out there in the wing. Uh, so he's definitely one that that you know was probably leading the way. You'd suggest to. To replace a loafer, a loafer on the wing for the Tars. Uh, the, the other contender there would probably be Peter Beetham, who's a, a, a Wallaby, played a few games for the Wallabies, um, and, and did some well for the Tars a couple of years ago. Is probably the other leading candidate for the wing there for uh, the Tars. So they played, so they've got No Yaravoro, they've got uh, Horn, they've got Peter Beetham, they've got a young fella, Andrew Callaway, as well, right? He was the under 19s. He looked pretty sharp. Is he going to yeah. be floating around, or who do you think yeah, might yeah. be starting? Yeah, Callaway's great, and he's. Oh, mate, I think they'll go with Beetham. I think, you know, for that... Uh, experience. What he's brought before. He's a bit of experience. I did, you know he did well over the ITM over there a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Kellaway is a real talent now. He's only young, like you say, but he's one of those natural try scorers. He he topped the table with the try scoring list at the under-20s last... Oh, this year, the IB under-20s. Mm-hmm. I, I think he, he equaled the the record for that tournament um, he the for our NRC, the National Rugby Championship we had uh, this year. Um, so just, you know, nice quality finishing. Uh, he's a ginger too, which always adds a bit of spice to it all. Um, but yeah, a, a quality traditional winger and, and definitely one to watch. So last season in the Fantasy Rugby Draft, Noyari Voro actually was one of three, or at least in the top three, for metres uh, uh, per carry. So the other two were Nadolo and um, James Lowe. So if you take out injuries, if you take out minutes played, and you just purely look at on what he was uh, when he was on the field, he was in the top three. So it's whether he can, whether or not he can actually nail down that left wing spot ahead of say Horn or Beetham, um, but he's certainly one that you need to keep in your back pocket for uh, draft day. Yeah, absolutely. The other one, if I can bring up a name, and he's not an outside back. He's uh, he's uh, one of the lock replacements. We talk about Douglas moving on, and you guys might be able to tell me more about him because he's a Kiwi. Is the Tars have signed this Sam Luesi from the the Auckland Warriors, the New Zealand Warriors? I've got no idea about him other than he's a big unit, and apparently he's got a fairly good ticker. Uh, any thoughts on him? Yeah, he's he's big. He's angry, um, and and that's all, uh, genuinely all I know. It seems it's a bit of an interesting one. A leaguey coming off and playing yeah. in the second row. You normally see them slotted either on the wing or in midfield or somewhere where they they can kind of get a bit of time. But to, to go into the second row, yeah, it seems a bit of a, a bit of a gamble. But they're not a, not averse to that. No, guitars. that's right. So. Well, they've got to get that balance in their 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 forward pack right with Douglas leaving. He's a real workhorse for them, and they've obviously got Will Skelton, who sort of came to prominence this year and, and played for the Wallabies. But oh, I think there's still a bit of uncertainty as to whether he you know he can start every match. Uh, of the season being the big unit of the years, and maybe he'll swap and change with Lois a bit. Yeah, that, 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 that's true. We um, we talked last podcast in the New Zealand squads, we talked about the resting implications for uh, the Rugby World Cup and, and whether players like Bowden Barrett or Cruden might be rested. Certainly players like Richie McCaw have got a big target on there to be rested. But for the Waratahs, is there anyone that jumps out of the page, that, that jumps off the page that, potentially could be in line to be resting. My mind kind of goes to Israel for now. Yeah, look, uh, is he, there's, a, there's a, some of those players who, who would prefer to be playing, isn't there? And Falao's one of those guys who would much prefer to be on the field than kicking back at a beach somewhere, bizarrely enough. Um, uh, someone like Michael Hooper, I, I was a bit of an advocate of him missing the Wallaby tour, only because he's had such a massive year, having getting thrown into the, you know, playing pretty much every minute of every game for the Waratahs, doing the same for the Wallabies in such a physical position, but then also having the added stress of being thrown the Waratah captaincy midway through the season, thrown the Wallaby captaincy midway through the season. I reckon there's just a big burden on him. Now, you know, 
I can understand why it was taken on Wallaby Tour, obviously, but he's one I'd be concerned about in terms of how he's how he manages that workload. He's a young guy, so he's got plenty of energy. Um, but the other two is, is Tatafu Pallada now and Wycliffe Palu, two critical players for the, for the Waratahs, um, but two guys who really need to be nursed through the season. And obviously there isn't that pre-four-week break in the middle of the season this year, so um, it'll be interesting to see how Chica manages their workload. What about uh, what about Adam Ashley Cooper? Oh, he's, I mean, the guy's he's a bit of a warrior, really. It'd be hard to imagine him, you know, uh, volunteering to miss time. But you know, imagine he's probably racked up a lot of minutes. I mean, you know, he's played a lot of tests in recent times, and yeah, maybe a candidate for resting as well. Yeah, but mate, he's off at the end of the year. Why don't we just burn him out? I thought that. <laughs> yeah, I was just, thinking exactly. Just ride him like Zorro. From <laughs> exactly the end of the year. right. He's someone else's issue next year. So. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's cool. So that's uh, that's the Waratahs. Mossman, uh, from a from a fantasy rugby draft perspective, in terms of drafting and value, have you got any players in mind from the Waratahs that you're particularly going to target yeah, in your well, draft? I think I mentioned Rob Horn before, just because I used I owned him uh, in a in a, in a uh, league last season. And um, you know, at that stage he was he was classed as a centre, but was playing on the wing. So you know, he was he was good value because he was playing out of position. Now I don't I don't know whether he'll still be classed as a centre in, in the game this no. year. He's not. Okay, well, so no, forget about him. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I never really liked him anyway. But uh. but, but it's, a, it's a great point though because there are a number of players that last season we just flat out didn't have enough information um, early on in December when we were making all of our rankings and our player position designation. So it's important to to be able to gleam that out. So there are a number of players that have changed from last year to this year, and Rob Horn was another, is one that streaks out. And Christian Lealefana is another one that was listed as fly half but never played a minute there. So I think it's it's going to be the usual, usual suspects. You know, Bernard Foley and Israel Folau, you know, those guys, they're going to go high in, in all drafts, and uh, quite rightly yeah. so. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. So we had um, uh, the mayor at Coochie Town recently, um, file his draft article, and he actually had Bernard Foley as one over Bowden Barrett as as, a, as the number one draft pick overall. We well, you know I'm going. You know I'm going for Cruden. Yeah, I Obviously, know you're going for Cruden. You, you have, you have, you have. You, you've put your put your flag on the pole. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's look at the Brumbies. Uh, what jumps out of you here, Ridge, about the Brumbies? They're an interesting one. You look at their, you know, most likely 15, and as is the Brumbies' way, real class in that back line. You'd effectively have an all-wallaby back line. White, you know, Tamuwe, Lili Afano, Kuradrani, Spate and Tamani on the wings. And then you get to Jesse Mogg, who is a wallaby, and burst onto the scene a few years ago. And I reckon he would have been one of those ones like a loaf for a loaf. If someone snagged him, you know, early on, they would have got some good value out of him. But his form since he made his test debut versus the Lions in 2013 has just slid and slid and slid to the point that even in the NRC this year, um, people were calling him to be dropped from the Vikings team, the Canberra team there. So really? it's a real shame because he's got a lot of talent. He's fast, got a great boot, but there's something going on. He's, uh, you know, the big question mark for me from a Brumbies. They're pack strong, but it, it relies on, it, it just seems unbalanced. They're back, they're pack strong. That relies on Pocock being back from injury and obviously out of jail from not protesting any causes, causes. Um, <laughs> but who they play in the lock, they've lost a few locks of late. Um, they obviously have yep. Wallaby Sam Carter. It, you're going to think that probably Scott Vardy, who every Australian loves, um, as our blindside flanker, is probably have to fill in that lock a fair bit for the Brumbies. But yeah, look, there are thereabouts. I don't think they've got the, uh, the, pr- Premiership capabilities this year or next year. And is, is chaining yourself to a bulldozer is that a new preseason training technique? Um, Mate, it, it sounds like something you might do in the world's strongest man. Is he is he actually trying to tow that bulldozer? Or? <laughs> yeah, I pity the police officer had to drag him into the uh, cop car. <laughs> is that is that David Pope? Yeah, I might just leave this <laughs> one here. Yeah. You want you want me to do what? <laughs> I'll take yeah, the sixty year old farmer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so looking at that back line, so I've – Joe Tamani, he, he stormed on the scene. He was fast, he was quick, he was big. He then got cornrows, yeah. and I haven't seen him play very well since. Genuinely. Yeah. He, I, I just don't rate him as a, as a winger. What are you talking about? Yeah, Samson. Of you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> he is, he is a little flaky. I'm a bit of a fan of Joe. I think he's uh, he's one of those yeah. guys okay. who's had – I'm talking probably more from a Wallaby perspective um, – 
uh, you know, a, a few opportunities for injury and, and, and has been solid when he's returned. He, he does have the defensive frailties and so on. I, I know what you mean. He doesn't doesn't dominate match by any means and probably gets um, overshadowed by Henry Spate somewhat. But um, uh, there's not many other options. If I could throw a name out there, this uh, Nigel R. Wong is uh, an interesting player. So Nigel's been around rugby in Australia for a little while. He played a lot of club footy in Brisbane here um, as a back rower. Was in the red sort of extended training squad. Uh, there's a stage there around the premiership age, you know, 2011, 2012, where he was the fastest guy in the squad over 40 metres. So fast and Rocket Davies, all those sorts of guys. Wow. So I know Link was talking about, was considering playing him on the wing. Um, he's moved to Canberra. I, had a, I think I had a year in Japan, but he's moved to Canberra now and he's pretty much solely playing outside centre. Played 13 for the Canberra Vikings uh, in this NRC and was one of their star players. Was really, really very good. Very dangerous ball in hand. He's got great skills. Very, you know, very agile. I talk about his speed, but he's still very aggressive. Um, so he's one that's interesting. Obviously, we've got Kieran Drani, who's probably one of the best outside centres in world rugby at the moment, who plays 13 at the moment. Whether uh, Wong could sneak across to the to the wing, um, I'm not too that's sure. What I was yeah. ask. Could he slide out? On yeah, that? well, I mean, like I said, McKenzie considered it for the Reds, and he's, he's still right. got that speed. It might be something you'd consider. It's just that positional play, but, you know, it's just as hard as 13. But here's one I'd, I'd, I'd throw there. It might be a bit of a dark horse uh, somewhere this season. Okay. It's good to know. Good to know. Good tip. Uh, one question that uh, we've been tossing backwards and forwards here at FRD Towers is who the hell's going to kick goals for the Brumbies? Because last season it, it was, I mean, we had Leo Leofano being injured, so Nick White was taking a lot of the kicks. But even when Leofano came back, he didn't take up the reins. And whether that's just because uh, he wanted to, to breed a bit of confidence, take a bit of pressure off his shoulders, just get back to focusing on being you know, the 12 as opposed to having the, the shoulder responsibilities of the kicking. But who do you think is going to be taking the kicks to start? Yeah, I think Lili Afano will. He had a bit of the yips last year and lost that kicking. Yeah. But I think Lili Afano will take most of the shots and White will end up taking the long-distance ones. Um, he's got the bigger boot. But I, I think given the full off-season, chance to regenerate all that sort of stuff, yeah, I think Christian will be the man there. Right. And what's... What's Lili Afano's range? Is is it an, is it a case where Nick White does come in for forty five, yeah. or is it Lili? Yeah, no, forty five uh, White. You know, forty five to yeah, fifty five okay. White can do those. Lili Afano is comfortable from forty. Um, so yeah. And does does Nick White wear anyone else's shorts apart from his sons? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the only way he can get those box kicks in. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> I'm sitting there squeaking on the couch, wincing. <laughs> okay, uh, for for the Brumbies, Mossman, any any fantasy any fantasy people that, apart from the obvious ones that you want to look out for? I know Tamu is an interesting one at ten because he doesn't kick the goals, but he still does create quite a few points. But uh, you really want your fly half to be kicking right. goals and, and fantasy. Yeah, absolutely. Out. You'll you'll find another fly half that'll that'll do a better job in that position that that kicks goals. Um, uh, if you if it's if it's like you say, Nick White doesn't take the kicks, then you can pretty much cross him off your list as well, because he does contribute in a lot of other ways from a fantasy perspective. And uh, and you've already mentioned him, but uh, I love me some Kurandrani. I think he's going to have an awesome season, um, and he's got everything you need from a fantasy perspective. Like, you know, he, he makes breaks, um, you know, he'll, he'll rack up a lot of yards, beats guys seemingly at will at times. Uh, yeah, he's an absolute beast, so uh, yeah, definitely, um, definitely look to target him. Yeah, I think I think we have Kuran Drani, and I'd have to check, but I think he's probably about the fifth or sixth, just behind uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Um, but yeah, he he certainly was one that. Now he had a few injuries last season and was rested a couple of times for I think it might have been a funeral somewhere along the way as well. But when he actually came on, his his minutes per game was was pretty impressive. Yep, quality player. Yeah, yes. Tossing over to the force, they they uh, they surprised a few last season. Do you think the, that was the norm, or do you think it was the aberration? Which side of the force do you think we'll see this year? Rich? Oh, the I think I've got... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to say. <laughs> I think um, I think they continue on. Obviously, they they won't be have that surprise factor anymore. I mean, teams will be a little bit more wary of them. But they've got a good coach. Michael Foley's a a good coach, and he's got a good posse around him of a couple of South African coaches helping him out. Um, and they've got a couple of good signings, solid signings, and 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 kept some people. Um, so look, I, I think uh, I think they'll be there and thereabouts. Well, you know, I think. Uh, Tars will be up the top. I'm talking from an Australian conference. Queens are not too far up behind. Oh God, I've got a. It's it's pretty tough once you think about it. But I think the force will do okay. Mm. 
Yeah, and who's their fly half going to be? Last year they they didn't really settle on whether it's C.S. Everson or Zach Holmes. They they kind of tossed it backwards and forwards, and they never really settled on one. Have you got a, a view this early on of, of who it might Well, be? having watched him destroy the Reds um, twice, it's Everson for mine. I, th- I think early on, and I don't know what that they're trying to um, support the local comp by picking Zach Holmes, who's a Perth boy, which is a great story. And there's, uh, you know, four or five of them in the squad, which is a really good development for him. But uh, the force were really played their best when they had the Sun boys in the halves there. So C.S. Eberson and Albie Matheson in the halves. And, and, and that's when they just, uh, they really sort of controlled the play. And they, they do have a fairly inexperienced back line, a really good forward pack, decent forward pack, but a bit of a, a raw back line. And those two Eberson and Matheson provided some great sort of um, direction around the field for them. Yeah, and that's an interesting point, getting on to the, to the back line there. So fantasy rugby draft favourite Jaden Hayward last season, a, a fullback that kicks goals in fantasy rugby draft is, is gold dust, and he, he took that up at the end of last season. He's gone now, so uh, a replacement for that 15. I, I understand Dane Haylett petty played quite well in the NRC. Yeah, he he was excellent in the NRC. He would have been close to um, the player of the tournament. There's probably a handful of guys who stood out, and Dane was one of them. Really? Yeah, he, he, he was with the force a few years ago and, and really quite young and then went overseas and did the France thing, I think it was, and came back last year. And I thought he was really solid last year, but he was he was standout in the NRC, and he's one I, I... He's a bit of a dark horse for me. Again, I reckon he could push for a Rugby World Cup squad position there. We're looking for a backup yeah. fullback. Obviously, Carmichael Hunt might come into the picture, but from the known knowns, Hallett Paddy is uh, is one to really keep an eye on. As for their other signing, uh, is another one that you guys might know more about, is Nicaro. Um, not too, yeah. you know, not too au fait with him, but I, I think the world of Dane, I think he's a great player. The, 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 Albert Nicaro is an interesting one. He's an Auckland lad who went down and played for the Chiefs for a wee bit. Now, he didn't get a hell of a lot of look in down there, but what he did do is he could kick goals from a long way. Yeah, right, back. okay. So, from a fantasy rugby draft perspective, you certainly keep an eye on that name, if not to draft, but just to have in your back pocket to see where they do settle on, whether it's Dane or, or McCall mm. who goes on the wing, because he certainly will be taking the, the longer kicks um, and anything, very much a Fran Stain type type effort. He's, he's just a little lad as well. He certainly looks, I say little, he's probably twice as big as I am, but he certainly looks a lot smaller than the other fellows on the pitch, but he certainly can put his foot through the leather. Yep, okay, good to know. Another player that didn't particularly push on as much as I'm sure most Australians thought he would was last year was Carl Godwin. He had a, had a really good debut season in the Super Rugby, and whether it through injury or whether it was just a, a sophomore slump or, or what they call it, um, he wasn't wasn't that great this year. Which side of uh, Kyle do you think we're going to see this season? Uh, it's interesting. We would have loved to see him on the Wallaby tour. He toured but didn't get a minute of play, um, so he sort of carried the bags with tour. It, Kyle's an interesting one because he 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 came from nowhere. He had an Australian under twenty season a couple of years ago, where he, with without being too unfair of him, wasn't overly impressive. Um, and then he had that breakout year a couple of years ago. But you're right, he, he wasn't able, and injury was a factor, but he didn't stand out as he did um, previously this year. Uh, he's a quality kid, he's a real hard trainer. I know that I know a few people over the force who think the world of him. So I, I'll give him some credit. He's, he's a type of player that work well, uh, his style of play and so on work well in that Wallaby team too. So look, uh, I, I hope he gets back because he could um, prove a real sort of defining player in that force team, a, a good line breaker. No, indeed, indeed. Uh, Mossman, just looking at the the force from a from purely from a fantasy rugby draft perspective, I know if you look at loose forwards, Matt Hodgson was was top of the tackle count last season, and, and certainly one to that, that well, didn't necessarily surprise a few, but what, went a little bit undrafted or further down the the rounds in the drafting. Is there anyone else on the force that you are particularly tra- targeting on draft? Oh, I don't think so. It's a little bit of a fantasy wasteland. No. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, from from that perspective. So uh, there's Aki, Akihito Yamada coming in from Japan. Yep. So, I mean, yep. I'm sure we've all uh, watched a lot of uh, Japanese rugby and, and uh, <laughs> played for the Panasonic Wild Knights. Um, just, just a fantastic name. Uh, he scored a lot of tries. Uh, right. hey, who knows? Can- yeah, I've always thought... About Junior Rasselier as yeah. well. He always, he, he's some that, that once he gets on the field and, and does something, it, it just, stuff happens for him. But he, 
just you don't see his name on the top of the boards every week when you expect it to see it. Yeah, I agree. He had another decent NRC too, was making breaks yeah. and, and creating offloads. One name I throw at you, and I, and I don't know how these guys score fantasy rugby, but Steve Murphy is, is back in Australia, and he's been signed by the force. Now, Steve was an Australian schoolboy, and I think he played in the 20s as well, uh, went off uh, to the UK, played with Leicester Tiger, Tigers for a few years, yeah. um, but and and play tests uh, uh, for some. I think played a dozen tests or so. So he's a big hulking lock back rower, um, pretty physical type of guy. So he'll be one to watch. He'll be a good impact player for the force. What he means from a, a fantasy rugby, I'll let the experts sort of work that out. But uh, yeah, another one to keep an eye on. A good signing. Good to know. Good to know. Put that in the back pocket. Come draft day. <laughs> Moving on to the rebels. Uh, this this is probably the team with the most movement. They've got uh, quite a few high-profile recruits and quite early on as well. What do you think of the players coming in, Ridge, um, particularly looking at Shipperley, Crawford, uh, Placid and Harris? And actually, before you answer that, which one of the uh, commentary uh, team in Australia do you think is going to make fun of Placid's name first? <laughs> well, 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 Placid had one game for the Reds before he de- Parted, so they had their chance there, but it's got to be Greg Martin, doesn't it? That's uh, the type of thing he's done. So, yeah. um, look, they're really, really good signings. As a Queensland Reds man, I'm, I'm pretty shattered to lose those guys. I can I can understand Harris moving on, and he's it's sad to see him grow a great team man. Shipley, I've got a particularly soft spot for. He, he scored a, an amazing uh, length of the field try to defeat the Tars about two or three years ago. Um, so that's Remember. always very fond of in my mind. And Jonah Placid is a young guy who uh, um, I first saw actually playing for the Australian schoolboys team against New Zealand schoolboys where he won the golden boot that day. Tore you guys up. He was very Chris Latham-esque, great lines. Um, he, he made one game, he played one game for the Reds this year and had, let's be fair, a shocker. Um, but he's a superb player, magical feat. Uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, prone to the odd sort of, uh, uh, odd mistake, but I think he's a, a great player. The Rebels have done really well. And Cam Crawford is another really good player. I played for the Waratahs this year. Uh, a winger, full back, decent boot on him. Um, so, uh, yeah, they've done really well from a recruitment perspective. Where do you think Harris is going to play? Do you think he's going to fit into to Mitch Inman and, and Tamati Ellison's role, or do you think they'll put him at fullback? No, I, I would suggest he'll go straight to fly half. Um, really? Yeah, look, yeah, look the, the, the Rebels, if there's something they've lacked, and they've got a couple of young players in, in Bryce Hegarty and, and uh, uh, Jack, Jack DeBresnik, who uh, had an excellent NRC Excellent in us, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about him in a second. But I, I just think what they've needed is someone who can control a game. Hegarty and Debrezny, young guys, pretty raw uh, with some definite ability. But Harris, you know, he, he runs a game well. He's had good experience with that. Uh, whether you go back to the ITM, but also for the Reds and plenty of time. So I, I just think he's there. You know, uh, Tamati Ellison and, and uh, Luke, uh, Mitch Inman in this centres has worked for the Rebels and Inman's a bit of a club stalwart there. You know, there's a chance that Harris could go out 1-12 to 12, but I, I suspect he'll start the season at 10. That's interesting because I was going to come on to Jack Debrashini or, or however you pronounce yeah. his name. I'm pretty sure that's close but I think he got it close. <laughs> um, uh, he, he, at the end of last season, he got a couple of games in South Africa. Now, he looks a little bit like in the mould of your Andre Pollard. Yep. You're kind of quite tall, challenging the line. Yep. Um, he had a couple of shaky kicks, but but we can forgive him for that for nerves, as you say. He's a, he's a young kid, but I thought they they might have actually given him a chance at, at ten because I know Hegarty's not the answer. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but he certainly looked like it. But that's really interesting. You say you know, they might put Mike Harrison there. I guess you you don't you don't plough all the money in to, to have him not be able to dictate a game. That's right. And I just think early in the season they they play those local derbies and they're they're really you know tough. But- Battles and and you, you find out players there, and I think Harris's solidity there will, will play them well. Uh, Depresny was great. He he has got one of the best short kicking games, or at least showed one of the best short kicking games in that NRC I've seen. Just mixed his game up, mixed his game up well. Took the ball to the line, made breaks, scored tries. He he scored twice as many points than anyone else in the competition. Um, he was fantastic. If Harris isn't going to play 15, then who do we think the Rebels' 15 might be? Crawford? Yeah, look, I, I suspect Crawford will start there. He's a good, and this is one of those things. You ask a, a, a Waratah fan, he'll say Crawford. Ask a Red, they'll say Placid, because we've each seen each player do well for their, yeah, right. their state. But I think Crawford probably is a bit more solid. He's got a really good boot on him. Placid is magic, though. And, and whether that works with the bench, we'll see. And it might be something that he, he ends up being there by the end of the season. But, uh, yeah, I, I would suggest Crawford will probably probably start. 
Rebels games are always an interesting one for fantasy rugby draft because there's always a lot of points. Yeah, right. Okay. There's, there's points scored against them. It's usually a fairly decent track, and they gen- tend to get fairly close as well. Not a hell of a lot of defense yeah. going on, but but certainly even even these kind of um, average players on from a from a real life perspective post some some very impressive fantasy rugby draft scores and in, in for the Rebels. Mossman, who are you looking at in the Rebels? <sighs> yeah, well, once again. You know, it's it's a, a name you've already mentioned, but you know, Mike Harris is, is if he's if he's kicking the goals and he's not listed as a fly half in this game, then he's you know, he's absolute gold. Yeah, he's a midfielder. We're going to put him as a midfielder. There you go. Yeah. So uh, if you can get him in your team, then um, you know you're off to a good start. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a, that, that is a good tip to put in your back pocket, listeners. Mike Harris. All right, moving on to your uh, your beloved Reds. Uh, Reg, there's, there's some also some pretty high profile. Actually, I probably suspect is they're even higher profile than the, the Rebels signings. How do you think they'll all gel together? Oh, it's an odd one, mate. I can't. Every Red signing that happened this year, whether it be you know the Tong and Thor, or this YouTube sensational <laughs> Carmichael Hunt, who's played sort of AFL before you know in league, or James O'Connor, the the prodigal son, or it just felt like that one of my favourite eighties movies, Major League, where you had all these sort of ragtag bunch of players coming together, you know, overcome adversity, it's blah 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 blah. Yeah, exactly. Alex. But um, look, the squad's there. They've really recruited well. They had some real deficiencies this year, season 214. Um, you know, they didn't have anyone who could help Quaid break the line. They didn't have any second playmakers. And they didn't have uh, much go forward in the forwards. And they've recruited well to get there. Hunt, O'Connor, uh, the emergence of Kamu Sur- Samu Karevi, um, and then in the forwards, Adam Thompson. Uh, really big signings for the, for the Reds. Uh, they've probably got a bit of a gap at tight head prop at the moment. Greg Holmes is going to be injured for a few games, and they don't really have another, they don't have another tight head prop that's probably ready to go for Super Rugby. That's their pro- one weakness. They've got some signing spots left to go. But other than that, mate, we're wrapped as Reds fans, and it, it gives our coach, Richard Graham, no excuses for next year. Very, very true. What do you think the the back three will be with with uh, Connor and Hunt and a few others in the mix? Look, I think it'll start fairly conservative. I think O'Connor will be on the wing. Um, uh, Rich Rich Grahams has has stated that that he'll start on the wing. Um, I think Carmichael Hunt will start at fullback. Um, and yeah, so he's they've played a few internal trials and and Hunt's been knocking him dead. Apparently, he's got a super boot on him as well as his uh, sort of playmaking skills, communication skills. You Whether kind that cha- kind of hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, All mates, <laughs> you look at Israel's boot, but uh, it, it, whether it changes through the season and Hunt moves closer to the action in the centres and O'Connor moves to fullback, we'll see. That'll all depend on on injuries, but I think they'll start at Hunt. At the fullback, O'Connor on the other wing. The, the third, the, the second winger spot's really up in the air. You've got Chris Efsatua, who's a test player and a, mm-hmm. and a great, you know, scores tries. He's injury prone and, and, and can go missing in a game. Uh, you've got um, Lachlan Turner, obviously, who's uh, pretty much the same. He, he doesn't so much go missing, but he scores tries and he gets injured. Um, and then the, the other dark horse, oh, look, there's JJ Tuolungi, who came on the scene last year, made breaks, made plenty of mistakes. Had a had a fantastic NRC again, really matured him. But another dark horse might be Chris Kurandrani, who's a little brother of uh, big Nemani Nadolo, um, who's uh, a, a big, strong, fast Fijian winger. He's got the full contract this year, uh, so he'll be another option. I, I think they'll go Chris Efsatua, um because yeah, he, he's a he's a bit of an enigma that lad. Um, but there's there's plenty of options there. Yeah, indeed. And you touched on a player there that that we have. Uh, very, very high this this season in the Samu career. Mm. At the end of last season, I think he played the last two or three yep. games, but he was untouchable. He looked, he, as I say, just he was line breaking, he was offloading, uh, he was he looked barnstorming. Did he did he carry that through to the NRC? He did, and even before that, in club season, he got a couple of games of club footy in before the grand finals, and 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 maintained. And, and I love a player that will perform at every level. Um, and Karevi's one of those. And then the NRC, he blitzed it. He was man of the match by the length of a field in the first game, um, and really set a high standard for the NRC. And then was obviously targeted for the rest of the tournament, but maintained it. I think he got voted players player of the tournament, all that sort of stuff. But he could just pull out the clutch plays when needed, making tackles, offloading, scoring tries he, he's excellent and you know should be starting i'd say it outside center next year outside benny tapawai they may swap around but i'd sus- suspect that'll be the centers yeah 
it. I think we have Samu Karevi at four with Mike Harris one, uh, Tamanavulu number two, uh, Fikatoa three, and Samu Karevi. Yep. So that's how highly we yep. rate Yep, him. excellent. You also touched on a, a, a bit of a, a favourite player of mine, and, and certainly from fantasy perspective as well. And it's not just from the uh, from the high school he went to, but <laughs> Adam Thompson. I think that's a great signing. We are wrapped about this. This was this is. I mean, we've had lots of signings, and Hunt will be great, but this could be the signing of the season. We all rave about Daniel Braid when he played for us a few years ago, and how what impact he had from a professional professionalism perspective. Um, and we can't wait for Thompson because we have lacked that in our forward pack. We've got some good forwards, good solid grafters, but since Radiki left and Scotty Higginbotham left, we have lost an impact player. And particularly seeing Thompson play in those Barbars games at the end of, end of the season, I don't know if you saw any of those, he's still got it. So we, we can't wait to see him in a red jersey, which I think will be end of Jan. You know, he should be back here after his Japanese season, early Feb, end of Jan. So... Maybe not starting first off, might be off the bench, but uh, as soon as he's there, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, Adam Thompson, we we as New Zealanders were a little surprised when he um, pulled up stumps and he left for overseas. I can't blame the guy; the money was thrown in his face, and, yep. and you know you, you're only young once and you've only got a certain window to get it. But he was he was incredible for the Highlanders. He um, he played that role and he scored a lot of points mm. and a lot of tries out wide. He, he just seemed to be able to get his hands loose at every at every kind of tackle or just budge through a line. A very, very impressive player. Yep, I agree. Can't wait. Mossman, who are you looking at at the Reds? Yeah, There's a lot there to pick as from. As you said, um, Adam Thompson, you know, he's, he's actually what you're looking for in a, in a fantasy um, loose forward. You know, he'll, he'll get wide, um, loves to run with the ball in hand. He, he will score tries. You know, he'll he'll do all that kind of, you know, that, the stuff that he had from his sevens background, you will see a lot of that, and that naturally lends itself to, towards fantasy points. So, um, assuming, of course, you, that you know he gets the minutes, because it's, it's you know there's still a lot of competition yeah. for spots in the uh, in the back row uh, in Queensland. So, um, you know that sort of remains to be seen. Uh, and I yeah, it's interesting because. It's, it's, I was just going to say, because the other big, another signing we've signed is we've signed Hendrik Chewy, who's a, a Japanese international. I think he's got a bit of New Zealand heritage in there, but he, having only seen the highlights of him, he's another sort of a bit of a barnstorming line breaking back rower as well. So, and you've got Jake Schatz and, and, and uh, Ed Quirk, and you're right, Adam Thompson will start. I've got no doubt though, but um, there is good depth there. Yeah. I, th- I think the signing, mainly for Adam Thompson, was predicated on the fact that he's got a little bit of ginger in his beard. Yeah. <laughs> we are red. You are red. Indeed you are. Um, we, we tossed around it a while. We, we thought that James O'Connor could potentially take a little bit of value away from Quade Cooper in terms of goal kicking, but where do you see that lying, uh, Reg? Is, is it going to be Quade 100% in, in, until he's injured? Yeah, I was interested to... In- see some stats come out last year earlier this year sort of ranking the international goal kickers from the last couple of years and and O'Connor and they ranked everything from uh, distance to angle to uh, moment of the match to the stress of the match so was it a match winner and O'Connor I think ranked second behind Francois Stein Um, in saying that I think Quaid will kick Quaid loves to have all the responsibility I've got a sneaking suspicion he might even be captain of the Reds next year as well I I think Orwell might step down and and Quaid take it on. And I, I think whether that plays in that decision, but I, I think Quaid kicks. There's time Quaid was kicking uh, instead of Mike Harris last year. It's just one of those responsibilities he likes to take on. He's a confidence player. Uh, I suspect he'll keep that kicking duties. Kuchitown made a, a very valid reference in his drafting article that he thinks the most exciting thing about the Reds this year is going to be watching the off-field incidents between O'Connor and uh, <laughs> O'Connor and Cooper in the pubs in uh, Queensland. Oh, mate, he's a changed man, changed man. This is what I keep hearing. This is what I keep hearing. <laughs> That's about all the time we have for today. Uh, in the next pod, we'll, we'll talk through the South African squads. We'll try and get someone as much knowledge as Reg and the South African uh, teams to, to run us through. This. Uh, a big thanks, Reg, for pulling in. Uh, we, we hope to have you again again once the season starts. Uh, enjoy your Christmas turkey, Thanks, mate. mate. Absolute pleasure to be here. More than happy to come on again. And uh, our best wishes to yourselves and all your listeners. Thanks very much. Appreciate thanks, it. Matt. 
Uh, a quick reminder on how to contact us. Uh, you can follow us uh, on Twitter at Fantasy Rag Draft, Fantasy AUG Draft, or on Facebook. If you have any questions, drop us a mail, support at fantasyrugbydraft.com. The site is now running. I'm not entirely sure when this podcast is going to go up. We're recording this a couple of days before Christmas. I suspect this will probably go out in January, so you'll probably already get the message. But if you do get it early through SoundCloud and through YouTube, uh, then log on to the site. You're up there. You can register. You can create a uh, create a league, and you can start drafting when you want. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson. He's Nathan Mossman. Feliz Navidad. Out to Peter. What a bust here by Christian Cullen. Plenty of support, and what a.